The Supreme Court has started to hear arguments based off of a Colorado web design company whose desire was to avoid work for same-sex weddings has run afoul of the state's public accommodation anti-discrimination law. And with that being said, y'all, this is serious business we have here. This new law that is found in Colorado that is, will also be found in other states coming up and popping up across the country. Also, the House just recently passed the same-sex marriage bill. And I know everyone is going to be watching this video. You're going to label me with every single label you have possible. And I will tell you this one thing, that Christians have never been on, uh, on the defense as much as we have been this past week alone. I personally even listened into the Supreme Court arguments concerning this case. I have some very intimate details here, but I will tell you this, that it was prophesied concerning this nation, that the church would become the laughing stock, that, that we would be so targeted and we would get so caught up even in just watching little soccer games and in the, the details that don't matter, that all of a sudden our faith is on the crucifix the crucif the the crucifixion and no longer are christians just the nice little warm christians no no christians are the target for the for the enemy's agenda in america and this new law that has popped up in colorado and really these laws are going on all across the country now they're labeling christians as bigoted they're labeling christians as uh, anti anti lgbtq and homophobic and discriminatory and and hateful and disrespectful and rude and just all this junk it's simply false on this episode, I'll be breaking down to you some more intimate details about that, but I want to share some scriptures with you because I know that you are thinking, um, next I want to go into more of the Supreme Court case. So basically, if you would think according to liberals, then the Bible is bigoted. This Bible right here that I have, this Bible is racist, it's bigoted, it's anti-discriminatory, it doesn't care about anyone, it's rude, it's just a white nationalist book that doesn't know what it's talking about, and there's there's no basis to even believe any of these Bible, and anybody that wants to go to church, anybody that wants to believe in the Bible, anybody that wants to actually claim that Jesus is their own, well, that's just a religion, and they just need to talk about that on a Sunday morning, because as soon as they come into our schools, then we need to confuse them with their gender and tell them that they can just do whatever. In fact, there's a Chicago school, I believe, recently, that even the, the head head dean of the school gave a bunch of sex toys to children and uh, to high school students just gave out sex toys and drag queens and boasted about it to his friends, thinking it was just a great thing. This is the world we're living in. But I know I'm sharing with you really bad news right now, and I know you could just watch this and get depressed, but I have good news for you because the lies of Satan concerning the Bible, the lies of Satan concerning the church and all these just junk stuff does not overcome the power that is within you as the true believer. And I'm just here to tell you that greater is the one living in you than he that is in the world. Here's the thing, though. If you choose to buy the lies that Christianity is a fraud and false and it's fake and bigoted, if you choose to buy that lie, your life will become the very lie you've bought. And in the Supreme Court case, I'll keep reading you. Basically, the court will likely decide the case by next spring or early summer. Here's the thing, though. This law has already passed in Colorado. I know similar laws are in California, probably New York, just all over the place. The court, uh, what's the limiting line of yours? Just, Justice Son Sonia Sotomayor. This is what the Justice Supreme Court Justice said. So, uh, she, and they said this against the defense. So basically, basically there was this woman in Colorado that made websites and a same-sex couple asked them to make a website for them. And she denied making the website because obviously if you make a website for a same sex couple, uh, that's obviously a promotion of same sex. It'd be like if you guys asked me to make a video, a, a loving, uh, celebratory video of the same sex wedding. Yes. Yes, queen. And, and you just want to like come to me with that. Well, here's the deal. Because I so love the people that are in the same sex wedding. I will not blindly stand there and watch them die and fall off a cliff of gender confusion and smile as I say, yes, go. That's lying. That is that is literal fraud. People say, Gabe, do you believe in same sex marriage? Listen, true marriage. It, it's not even like, what do I believe in? Or what is like, what does the Bible say versus what does the Bible say? No, truth is what the Bible says. Truth is Jesus himself. And we know that Jesus is the Bible in a body. We know that Jesus is God himself put in a body, but he's the word of God. We know that marriage was a God-given gift between a man and a woman. People like to say it like this, if you have sex outside of a marriage, you might think that you have the benefits of marriage and you might think that, you know, um, 
or, or or internally you're basically married so why not just have sex except you're not married until there's actual commitment you're not married until there's a ring you're not married until there's actual legal papers that say you are committed to each other for the rest of your life right and you can try to have sex outside of that you can try to say that you like basically have the same benefits you can try to claim that you have all the same things but at the end of the day you don't you got to go by truth um, and so what this law does is it just puts Christians on trial. And I'm telling you right now, get this though. This is what was crazy at this court. They basically said, they asked this woman that was defending herself. So she denied the same sex couple from making a website for them. And of course, Colorado decided to come after her and prosecute her and do all these things to her. And she now has taken her case to the Supreme Court. She's telling the Supreme Court, I, it's my free speech that I can say what I want and that I can believe what I believe in. Right. And one of the Supreme Court justices said, well, what's your line? Because if you're just going to do whatever you believe in, why, uh, what makes us think that you're not going to, uh, what makes us think that you're going to actually be respectful to all people? Because who knows, you might say no to disabled people. You might say no to interracial marriages. And that's all the, the that's one of the biggest lies that liberals say. They're like, well, if you could just serve who you want to, and if you just want to serve, you know, your beliefs, what if you believe interracial marriage is wrong? What if you believe disabled people can't get married? And that's just such a complete fallacy. There's so many things to break down there. But number one, right off the top, faith is not a religion that you check a box for once a week. Faith is not just some religion that you think to yourself, okay, yeah, that's my religious box and then I'm good. No, faith in Jesus Christ, if he is your personal Lord and Savior, if he's your best friend, it means everything. He is intimate to you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in a relationship and I'm not, I'm not even married yet. And I constantly think about my girlfriend every day. Do you think it would make any sense if I told you, yeah, I'm in the best relationship ever and I so love my girlfriend. I only think about her once a week. <laughs> You'd be like, Gabe, you are struggling, brother. You don't know what you're talking about. So let's just take our honest feedback and to anyone that wants to say, yes, I'm a great Christian. I love God. Uh, but in school, I'm gonna do what I want. Separation of church and state. Bull crap. Sorry, Lord. I don't know. I shouldn't be saying crap, but that's what it is. I'm, I'm calling it what it is. <laughs> All that to say, let's look at some scriptures because I know the counter argument to this has been, well, what about like the people that thought interracial marriage was wrong? What about the people that thought disabled people shouldn't be married? Yeah, that's just simply wrong. You shouldn't. Uh, think that interracial marriage is wrong. You shouldn't think that disabled people shouldn't get married. You should love disabled people. You should love interracial marriage. You should love all races, all sexes, all all two genders. And you should love every group and category of people, no matter how they look, um, no matter how tall they are, no matter their age. That being said, you should continue loving people and if they make choices that is hurting them, and if they make choices that is not something that lines with God's word, that is not in line with the blessing, you cannot blindly sit there and just support it. Because if you support the blind curse, you chosen the side against God. You know, God said to Israel, he said, here's the mountain of blessing, and here are the things that I will bless you with if you will follow me. And then he said, if you don't follow me, you will be cursed. And if you don't follow my commands, you will face the curse of the law. God didn't say, oh, because you're Israel, I will just like, you can choose whatever you want. You can be whoever you want to be. You can do whatever you want. And then I'll just have to bless you. No, it's simple, man. Life has repercussions. Life has consequences. And your sexual choices are a simple choice. If you're a guy and you want to marry a guy, that's your choice. Go ahead and do it. I'm not telling you what to do. You live your life. But I will just tell you, because I love you, because I care about you, because I do know that there is real love for you, and because I know that you're amazing and God has called you and chosen you, I will tell you about your future wife. I will tell you about your future amazing family that you can have. And even separate of faith to any of my atheists watching this video, it simply is, is bi biological that it doesn't make any sense why homosexual marriage should be promoted. It is If everyone is homosexually married, uh, there's no more kids. Uh, it, it's literally degenerate. It's not even healthy for humans. Like, like let's take God out of the picture. Even if God didn't exist, it wouldn't be good for humans. <laughs> like, uh, I get so annoyed when people are like, okay, this is a religious thing. No, this is just a reality. This is a reality check. But let's look at some scriptures because I know y'all are saying like, hey, Christians are just supposed to be like not rude, not disrespectful. They're, they're just supposed to be loving. I remember when I was in school, I bought that lie. I was told like, Gabe, you're not supposed to talk about these things. You're just going to be known as that one Christian in class. You're just going to be known as that annoying person. And I just bought that lie. And as I look back, let's read this scripture. Jesus said in Matthew 10, um, we'll start out. And you know, Jesus called the shots here. Jesus told us these things would happen. G Matthew chapter 10, by the way, I'm actually one minute from finishing this live stream. I'm just going to read the scripture to you. Then we're going to pray. Then I'm, I'm going to finish this live stream on YouTube. Verse 16, Jesus said, now remember, it is I who sends you out. 
even though you feel vulnerable as lambs going into a pack of wolves. Notice Jesus didn't say, oh, because your feelings are hurting, I'm not going to send you out. Because you're afraid, I'm not going to send you out. I don't want to be disrespectful to you guys. I don't want to be rude to you guys. I don't want you to be rude when you go out and spread the gospel and tell people they need to radically change their lives and tell people that sin will never save them. No, Jesus said this, be as shrewd as snakes, yet as harmless as doves. What does that mean? True kindness, true love doesn't blindly, softly just accept what is ever is going on and put on a smile. True love has the strength to win and wins the battle and then protects willingly. Um, a husband to a wife, right? The husband is strong. The husband can, can win and physically conquer anything and anyone, right? And if anyone tries to touch his wife, you're messing with a snake. You're messing with a lion. But when the husband goes to his bedroom with his wife, he's a lamb. He's kind. He's um, he's gentle. But it's but true kindness and true gentleness is only is only even able to be authentic when there's strength to back it up. And that's as we as Christians, as we come into these last days, I challenge you to put everything on the line for God, to place the opinions and fears of men, to place your teachers, your bosses, um, your social media following, put it all on the line and just give it all to God. Put it all on the altar, because in these last days, you will be you will be targeted for your faith. You will be labeled as bigoted. You will be labeled as uh, transphobic. You, I don't know. So many, so many different ways in which the liberals can take this. Also, I finally just want to say true identity is not found in sexual choices. Everyone that wants to say you're just discriminating against LGBTQ. Listen, LGBTQ is not a race. It's not an age. It's not a label. It's not a skin color. It's sexual choices. And yeah, do you treat people differently based on their choices? Yes. Someone walks in your restaurant and they have a bat in their hand. Are you going to serve them dinner? No. And now am I equating someone who's gay to someone with a bat in their hand? No, I'm not. I'm simply justifying the principle that someone's choice uh, has consequences. And someone's choice doesn't demand that you just treat them a certain way. No, you, you, we are called to love with truth. We are called to love. And again, finally, just to be practical, anybody in my life that is gay or trans or, you know, however they choose to live sexually, or, you know, ju what's just as bad as gay is having sex outside of marriage. And I don't judge them. I don't blame them. I don't think I'm better than them. I don't think that I'm just some better Christian. I don't. Seriously, I don't think I'm more righteous. Like, no, like simply I love them. I'm their friend. And if they give me a place, if they ask me what I think, I'll tell them the truth, but I'll just be friendly to them. And, but if they want me to go to their gay wedding, or if they want me to make them a gay wedding cake, or if they want me to post on my social media, how awesome it is that they're marrying their guy, a guy's marrying a guy. I will say, uh, no, I, I don't support you in this, but I do love you. And that's just the truth. That's how we got to go about things. And we shouldn't be prosecuted for that. Um, with all that being said, you know, I think it's time for us to just be who God says we are to be. Put aside your past, put aside your fears of what people think about you, and just be confident today because God fully believes in you. The Bible says, greater is he living in you than he that is in the world. And to anyone watching this right now, and you struggle with the fears of what your parents think of you, of what your siblings think of you, of what even your future looks like. I know a lot of people are worried about their jobs right now, worried about the economy. God says to you today, cast all your cares on him because he's looking out for you. He's got you. He's taken care of the worst possible situation, death itself. He's placed in the grave so that you could be alive. Jesus isn't the only one that's been given the ability to beat death. You now have his keys. My question to you is, what is a situation that is worse than death? And what if I told you there's nothing worse than death? And if death itself has been beaten, life has been given to every single man, and we can walk in that God-given life every single day of our lives. With all, that, with all that being said, pray these words with me. God, I love you. Jesus, I give you everything. Jesus, I will stand for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen and amen. Now, before you guys go, just two quick things. I'm actually going to be doing a part two to this live stream. So actually what I'm going to be doing is uh, in about 30 seconds, I'm going to be ending this live stream and I'm going to be doing a part two where I'm just going to be talking about some more of my experiences and some more strategy, some more biblical verses to provide you strength and hope. I'm going to be interacting with your guys' questions and all those good things. So um, to watch the rest of this live stream, click the link down in the description below, the Rumble link. And uh, 
to also finally my god put this message on my heart it's named built different i'm not here to make money i'm not here to just promote my book this book will help you it's a 90 day devotional be sure to check that out down in the barnes and link down in the description below you're helping me out a lot but really you're helping yourself out a lot it breaks down the bible in a biblical way it's also just a bunch of fun so be sure to check that out it's named built different it'll be on all your stores but it's down the link in the description below barnes and noble